Hello, you're watching France 24. Welcome to a special edition of Middle East Matters. The year 2017 is marked by the demise of the Islamic State group across its former strongholds in Iraq and Syria. This past summer, Mosul in Iraq and Raqqa in Syria were both seized by the US-led coalition forces. Let's take a look back. The Syrian army takes back control of al-Bukamal one of the Islamic State group's last major strongholds, and a victory that shows how far the extremists have fallen. However, it's taken three years of bitter counteroffensives to get this far. When they seized the city of Raqqa in 2014, they met little resistance and rushed to occupy swathes of both Syria and Iraq. Stretching from Kobani in the north, down along the Euphrates Valley, to the Iraqi city of Fallujah, Along the banks of the Tigris River, from Tikrit to Mosul, it left some 10 million people living under their control. However, early August that year marked the beginning of the coalition counteroffensive in Syria and the entry of the United States into the conflict, when then-President Barack Obama authorized airstrikes against the group in Iraq for the first time. Two early victories against the Islamist militants came in northern Syria in 2015, when coalition forces recaptured the Kobani region and the key border town of Tal Abyad. February 2016 marked another turning point in the conflict, when the extremists fled Ramadi under the bombs of coalition airstrikes. The following month, too, saw a key victory, with the recapture of Fallujah. After Mosul, it was seen as one of the group's most important Iraqi strongholds. Over the border in Syria, the Islamic State group saw its supply line through the Turkish border successfully cut in June, when the strategic town of Manbij fell to the coalition forces. That same month, the militants were also forced from Jarabalus, another key border town, in just 24 hours. The ancient city of Palmyra was recaptured in March of this year, another deeply symbolic victory, despite its virtual annihilation at the extremists' hands. Yet it was the liberation of Mosul, a grueling nine-month struggle, that marked the collapse of the Islamic State group's influence in the region in July. The second largest city in Iraq, it was here that the extremists first proclaimed the creation of their caliphate in June of 2014. Within a few months of the Battle of Mosul, the IS group stronghold of Talafar fell to coalition forces, followed by the Huwija district not far from Kirkuk. A final push to eradicate extremist influence in Syria came with the U.S.-backed offensive on their self-professed capital of Raqqa. It saw the city retaken after three years of brutal occupation. And while the Russian military now says Syria has been completely liberated from the Islamic State group, the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights says the militant group still holds about 8% of Deir ez-Zor province. According to the coalition, less than 3,000 Islamic State group fighters remain in Iraq and Syria. Well, joining me now on set is France 24's reporter James Andre and Wasim Nasser, France 24's expert on jihadist movements. Thank you for joining us. Let's start with you, James. The Iraqi government recently declared that the country is free of the Islamic State group. What does the future of Iraq look like? Well, the thing is, that statement in itself is interesting because quite clearly the so-called caliphate is gone. They have no more territorial control. But as to say that the Islamic State group has disappeared, that is a totally different matter. And if you like, I've actually been through the whole story because back in 2011, in December, I was covering the withdrawal of the American forces from Iraq. And at that stage, we met with some Sunni tribe leaders who were telling us back then that they were sick and tired of Baghdad and Nouri al-Maliki's rule and that they were thinking about, you know, an uprising against the Iraqi central government. And, well, we saw what happened. Basically, the, this is the same story that started at that stage and that morphed into the Islamic State group, the so-called caliphate, and their demise today. But the thing is, the basic reasons that push these people towards insurgency have not changed. All the root causes are still there, and they're even worse, because if you go to cities, you know, over the course of these couple of years, I've been to Ramadi, I've been to Mosul, which has totally destroyed the center of Mosul, to various cities which are very severely damaged. Now, the question is, what's the next step? Chances are there will be a new Sunni insurgency, maybe a new movement that might come out of all this, and that could even be worse. 
Now, let's talk to you now, Wasim. Could we see uh, an increase in attacks on the West as they try and stay re relevant and try and hold on to their power? Of course, because if you look at the attacks in the West, they were mostly perpetrated by people who weren't able to join uh, Syria or Iraq, uh, for example. And by building this jihadi myth, uh, the Islamic State became a global group. Because starting from a local group in the desert of Anbar in 2006 and up to 2011, today it's a global uh, trademark or mark. Based on fear as well. Based on fear and based on many local objective causes. Because today they are present in Egypt, they are present in Afghanistan. And for example, the highest casualties of the U.S. Army against Islamic State militants is in Afghanistan, not in Syria or Iraq. They are present in Yemen, in Somalia, in Libya, in many other places and are still able, because of this myth, uh, they are still able to motivate uh, people who are with them, people who, are, uh, who accept this ideology all over the world, in the Western countries, but also in other, in other countries. All right. Thank you, Wasim. Thanks, James. Stay with us, though. The battle to rid Iraq and Syria of the Islamic State group has come at a devastating human cost. In the Syrian city of Raqqa, for instance, coalition forces dropped thousands of bombs, flattening buildings and destroying homes. Many civilians died trapped underneath the rubble, as we see in this next report by James Andre. A small number of Raqqa residents are returning to the less destroyed outskirts of the city. Everyone here has suffered in the battle. Ayat has lost her entire family in a coalition strike. Today, she returns to the scene for the first time. Raqqa city center is dead silent. The stench of decaying bodies and burnt buildings fills the air of what once was Syria's largest city. The coalition's bombing campaign has left no buildings unscathed. The car stops in front of the ruins of a gutted building. This is where Ayat's family was killed. She is hoping to find the bodies of her children. I 
انا اليوم اقلهم مشان هي بدهم مصاري حق التركسات يشيلوا الركام على الاولاد يعني فوق ما هوتوهم بدهم حق مصاري منهم منين اجيب لكم مصاري؟ اللي يقدر يجيب الصاروخ ويحرق ارواحه ويقتل ارواح اطفال ابرياء ما لهم ذنب ما يقدر يعجز عن مال وين الحرب اللي صارت مشان الشعب والحريه؟ وين الحريه؟ الحريه بس تنشيل على روسنا ها هي الحريه اللي يدورونها نحن ما بدنا هاي الحريه بدنا نحافظ على ارواح اولادنا بدنا نرتاح بالنا بدنا نعيشهم بامان فكروا خلص انتصروا هذول كانوا ظالمين وهذول قاموا يصيرون اظلم وين بده يجي النصر اخيرا سمحوا لي اشوفهم رقه جديده غير هيك لازم يبنونها على الجبل ده حق الركام وال هذا الشيء عاد له شيء يسوي وباكثر العالم قعدت يعني بمناطق برا مثلا بعين عيسى بالمخيم تقول له ارجع الرقه يقول لك شو ارجع الرقه الرقه تدمرت يعني وفعلا متدمره خالص That report from France 24's James Andre. James, that must have been a really difficult report to film. It seemed very harrowing. What, what was it like? Well, it's difficult because when you drive into Raqqa, you realize that the city is completely destroyed to an extent which is very impressive. It's like a vision of apocalypse, if you will. No, none of the buildings are in their normal state. Everything is destroyed. Now, uh, that is something which is quite shocking. The other things which are shocking are the noise, because there is absolutely none. It's total silence. There are no, no birds even. So you hear absolutely nothing. It's completely, it's like blank noise over the city. And there is the smell of death and explosives and, you know, fire, which is something which really does, you know, just... Uh, just uh, which is very very shocking as you drive in and of course there are these stories of the people are telling of how much they've lost I mean this woman we saw in that report has lost absolutely everything now obviously the questions are how is it going to be possible to demine that city because it is full of explosives how is it going to be possible to rebuild the city and of course how is it going to be possible for these people to live after what they've just been through Okay, questions that will be answered in the months and years to come, no doubt. Let's talk about the Kurds now. They played a role, a, a large role, alongside the US-led coalition in fighting the Islamic State group. What does their future look like? Well, indeed, as you were saying, the Kurds were the backbone of the Syrian Democratic Forces. Now, they're the force that liberated Raqqa on the ground, and they are allied with the United States. Now, the big question mark right now is, how is that alliance going to evolve? Are the United States going to carry on supporting them, or are they going to uh, basically let go of that alliance because it poses a lot of political problems uh, in the area? And the other big question is, the Kurds are now controlling a lot of land that is actually Ar Ar Arab majority. So they are now seen as an occupying force in Raqqa, in the villages along the Euphrates River. And we actually witnessed that. We witnessed the tension between these you know, majority Kurd forces and the local population, because there is obviously uh, both groups are very wary of each other. The Kurds, because they're afraid that there may be infiltrators, and the population, because they see this as a new form of control over their area. Okay, James, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for watching Middle East Matters and this special edition about the demise of the Islamic State Group.